Okay, guys, uh, topic four, the velocity transforms, um, and then I also do the acceleration transforms, although I'm only holding you responsible for the velocity transforms and only the X component, because we're only going to look at one dimensional motion. But we can get the general, uh, we can get all three components, it turns out. All right, so um, what you do, it, it, you do the exact same thing you did uh, we did, I, I discussed in uh, the module, uh, the video, excuse me, uh, with Newtonian relativity. So in other words, suppose you have an object moving in both frames. Frame S prime is still moving, right? Speed V to the right relative to frame S. There's an object moving. The velocity of the object is U measured by somebody in S, unprime, let's say. And then the velocity of the object is U prime measured by prime in frame S prime. So if you want to compare the components of the velocities measured in the two frames, uh, we can start in frame S prime. We define U prime sub X to be DX prime DT prime. We use the chain rule just like that. You can do the same thing for the Y component, the Z component. The big difference here is that in Newtonian relativity, this DT DT prime was one. It's no longer one. And also we have a different transform for X prime. So if you stick that in there, okay, in fact, here's the time derivative, but that is not one anymore because T is not equal to T prime. But if you stick that into the time derivatives right here and you put in the transforms, the Lorentz transforms for X prime, Y prime, and Z prime, and you do a lot of algebra, which I'm skipping, you end up with these transform equations right here in 4.3. So here's how you get u prime sub x from u sub x. Here's how you get u prime sub y from u sub y. Here's how you get u prime sub z from u sub z. You will note that in all the transforms, even the y and z components, there's a u sub x. And that's because the direction of relative motion is the common x, x prime direction. So the velocity of the object along that direction is important in determining the velocities perpendicular to that axis in the other frame. Okay. All right. But again, you just have to worry about this first transform right here, the x prime, the x, u prime x, u x transform. Okay. All right. You can do the derivative game again. You can take the derivatives of these components, these velocity components, to get the accelerations. Okay. Oh, oh, before I do that, I should mention the inverse transform. So in other words, depending on the problem, you may have, you may know u prime sub x and have to find u sub x. So an easy way to get the so-called inverse transform is just swap the prime with the unprimes, right, and make V negative V. So if you did that, you would end up with, um, well, I don't have it in this actual PowerPoint. Um, it's in the summary notes, okay, but it's not in this actual PowerPoint. But you would just swap. So this would become U sub X, this right here. This would become U prime sub X. And you'd have a plus sign right here. This would be plus V. And right here, you'd have a plus sign. Okay. If you do the acceleration uh, der derivation, which, again, is a lot of algebra, you would end up getting these transforms. But, again, you're not responsible for these acceleration transforms. I just wanted to show you that the two observers will not measure the same acceleration of the same object, unlike in Newtonian relativity. Okay. All right. Let's see how to do an example now, this example is from the summary notes. Oh, in this example, I actually have the X transform and the inverse transform. All right, so for if you want to find U prime sub X, you use the first equation. If you want to find U sub X, you use that equation. So how would the solution of this work? So let me see if I can change this to screen mode because I animated this. Oh, yeah, I think this will work. Okay, so let's read it. A spaceship moves away from um, moves away from Earth at point nine C relative to the Earth. It fires a missile in the direction of its motion at point nine five C relative to the ship. It fires a second missile at point nine five C towards Earth relative to the ship. 
A, find the speed and directions of the two missiles relative to Earth. Okay, now before we do the solution, let me just point out a couple things. First of all, when you do these velocity transform problems, it's really convenient to express all speeds, velocities, as a fraction, a decimal times C. Okay, it, it just helps when you do the math. I'll show you. Um, so and the other thing is, whenever you're given a velocity, just be careful. Make sure you know that velocity is relative to who or to which observer. Okay. All right. When you go to do these velocity transform problems, the first thing, right? Oh, I guess the first thing is let's write down the transforms and the inverse transform. And again, we're always going to do one dimensional problems only involving the X motion. All right. So when you go to do these problems, there's always going to be an SS prime diagram. And we're going to do a, right? So there's always going to be an SS prime diagram like that. Start drawing that. There's going to be an observer in S you have to identify, an observer in S prime you have to identify, and then an object you have to identify that moves in both frames. So let's do the first part of A. Find the speed of the first missile. Okay. So if I read this, a spaceship moves away from Earth at 0.9 C relative to the Earth. I'm tempted to make S Earth's frame and S prime the ship. Now, as soon as I do that, V is always going to be the velocity of the S prime observer relative to the S observer. So if S prime is the ship's frame of reference, that's the velocity of the ship relative to the Earth. Well, that is 0.9 C. And I'm going to make to the right mean move away from the Earth. So that means I know that V is 0.9 C. Now, what's the object moving in the two frames? That's going to be this first missile, right? I'm going to call it missile one, and it moves, right, in the direction of its motion, the ship's motion. So that means missile one is going to be moving to the right. Now, as soon as I draw that object and identify it, I immediately say there's got to be a U sub X and a U prime sub X. U sub X is the velocity of the missile measured by the observer in S, that would be Earth. U prime sub X is going to be the velocity of the object, the missile, measured with respect to S prime observer, which is the ship. Now, what are we told? We're told that it, the ship, fires a missile at 0.95 C relative to the ship. So that's going to be U prime X because the ship is in frame S prime. We're asked to find the speed and direction of the missile relative to the Earth. So I say U prime sub X is positive 0.95 C because it's fired oh, right in the direction of the ship's motion, which is to the right. U sub X, I don't know. That's what I have to find. Well, as soon as I do, I have this identified, you're almost home because you just go up here and you say, which of these two transform equations do I need? I need to find U sub X, so I have to use the second one. And then it's just a matter of filling in the information, right? U prime sub X is 0.95 C, V is 0.9 C, right? I do that substitution. And look, I never have to worry about putting in 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. If I leave everything again as a decimal times C, I'm just going to get a final decimal times C. I'm going to have one C in the numerator, and then I'm going to get a C squared over a C squared in the denominator. My denominator is just going to be a number, and boom, I've got my answer. The velocity of that missile, missile 1 relative to the Earth, is positive 0.997 C, which means because it's positive, the Earth sees the missile traveling to the right at 0.997 C. I would point out that if we use regular Newtonian relativity, if the ship's moving at 0.9 C to the right with respect to the Earth and fires a missile at 0.95 C to the right relative to the ship, Newtonian relativity would say Earth measures that to be 1.85 C. You would just add those velocities, right? But we know that can't be. In fact, nothing can travel at the speed of light except for light. And we'll, we'll emphasize that in the next video. All right, let's do the second part of A, missile two. Now, missile two is fired 
at 0.95 C towards the Earth relative to the ship. So I'm going to go to the next slide, and that would look like this. I still have the ship moving to the right, but now I have the missile moving towards the Earth, right, relative to the ship. Okay? So now I draw the missile going to the left, but again, i got to remember that's relative to the ship. All right, so as soon as I have my missile there, I know there's, oh, I'm sorry, first I need my V, 0.9C, but then once I have my missile there, I know there's got to be a U sub X, that's the velocity of the missile relative to frame S, the Earth, and then a U prime sub X, the velocity of the missile relative to the ship. I know that the 0.95C towards Earth is relative to the ship, but here's where I got to be careful towards the earth again is to the left relative to the ship so I have to make that u prime sub x negative very important because we're using equations okay u sub x I don't know so again once I have my diagram established and properly identified all my variables I just come up and I say okay which one do I need to use which of these two equations the u sub x one so now I put in keeping in mind that u prime sub x is negative my values and I end up with u sub x is negative 0.345c. Now, what's that mean that it's negative? That means the Earth also sees the missile traveling to the left, which is towards the Earth. But the missile will be traveling at 0.345c towards the Earth for people on the Earth. Okay? All right. Then the last question, B, oh, the ship fires a laser pulse at velocity C relative to the ship in the direction of the Earth. How fast is the pulse travel as measured on Earth? Oh, guys, easy way to do this. All observers measure light to travel at sea. You don't have to do any math. If it's light traveling at sea, everybody is going to be measuring that light to be traveling at sea. However, if you don't believe me, you can use the transformation equations like what I show you right here is that I don't care what V is. It could be 0.9C or anything. If you have a laser beam traveling to the left where U prime sub X is minus C, the algebra will show you that U sub X is also going to be minus C independent of V. Right? Turns out that the V cancels and there's a term involving V that cancels and it's going to be C. All right. So you're ready to try your homework problem that I'll talk about in an email and I'll assign to you. Bye.